coming up right here on CBS 2 at 9.30, The Drew Barrymore Show. And this morning, Drew and award-winning journalist Lisa Ling visit Otisville Prison in Orange County, New York. Drew and Lisa speak to the female prison guards making a difference in the all-male prison and in the male-dominated field. Here's a preview. So many female corrections officers in this room right now. What is your key to um, gaining the respect and keeping yourself safe in this kind of an environment? I think just communicating with them, asking them how their day was, how their weekend was. Drew and co-host Ross Matthews join us now. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is such a... Um, a different subject than I think your viewers yeah. are used to. Right. And and I think it's really, really interesting. What uh, what other things are they going to see on, on your show from your visit to the prison? Well, I mean, I am sort of, I, I don't dare to compare myself in any way, but I too am sitting here because of, you know, rehabilitation, second chances, people taking the time to believe in me. I was in an institution for two years of my life when I was 13 and 14 and had to get emancipated by the California courts and become a legal adult. And there are times in your life where you just believe your narrative will never change and that you will never get past the mistakes that you've made. Mm. And again, I don't dare to compare, but I have so much respect towards these female corrections officers and I have so much empathy towards people who I know would like a second chance at life. And so this for me felt educational, it felt personal. Mm -hmm. I felt like I could go in relating, um, but I also could go in as a student and learn. Mm -hmm. And you know, that is exactly what is so fascinating about the way I'm gonna talk about you like you're not here. I love <laughs> about <laughs> how About how Drew does the show. I mean, we cover so many different things. If you watch, and you know, we yeah, are right yeah. after you. Yeah. If you watch, you, we, you see us doing fun, silly things, feel good moments. But this kind of this kind of story, you and Lisa going in there, bringing your perspective that really no Nobody else has it's so unique to you and that's why I think this this conversation today is so fascinating you know and mm -hmm. I loved seeing you in that role there's also you know a tremendous uh, statistic that was so eye-opening about how you know nearly 50% of Americans are you know um, related to or know somebody intimately that has been incarcerated mm -hmm. and going with Lisa mm -hmm. felt so full of integrity on the journalistic scale and I have so much respect for her that we could tag team in different ways and bring two different perspectives um, and two different worlds of experiences to the yeah. table while we ask and listen. Yeah, and wow. we, there's so much takeaway from this conversation. We learned so much about you, about what's going on inside mm -hmm. these facilities from both sides. Yeah. But you make a good point too because mm -hmm. your show is real fun. Mm -hmm. But it's real. Yeah, that's thank it. You. What I love, because your fans just, they really are there to participate. Question, yeah. kind of a, 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 a sidebar. What's the biggest misunderstanding you think people have about either the prison system yep. or female prison, or prison guards? You know, I think that there is such a taboo uh, subject nature to the prison system mm -hmm. um, and I feel very humble and nervous even trying to do something like this. It is very intimidating um, because there is uh, so much um, negative uh, yeah. context about the way these systems are run. But this prison at Otisville, mm -hmm. um, this Federal Corrections Institute, as known as an FCI, is mm -hmm. really trying to do things differently, and there is a very different intention and a very different tone coming out of it. Nothing is perfect, but I really wanted to shine a light on how much investment mm -hmm. these corrections officers have towards the people that are in there. And they always talk about, we are putting these people back into society, and it makes you think differently yeah. about the whole process and that there is a full picture, there is a full life here. This is not just a moment and that's where again I relate because if I hadn't been given second chances mm -hmm. I would not be Drew sitting Barrymore here. Show. Yeah, she <laughs> talks about that all the time, second chances, and I think that's a really important message. It's I can not, understand. It's not <laughs> often that you will get through a life 
I've rarely, if never, met anyone who said, you know what, I just had this smooth sale. Right, I right. never made a mistake. <laughs> yeah, and life great. has been so, so easy. wonderful. Yeah. And so I just, yeah. you know, I want this show, I always wanted this show for Ross and I to come out and you kind of don't know what's going to happen, but we're always going to put the glass half full spin on mm -hmm. things because that's how I live life. I cannot live in a non-optimistic space, but optimism also is like happiness. Mm -hmm. It's a choice. Mm. It's not always easy or on tap, and you have to really work towards it. So I want to change that narrative that happiness is not this lofty, silly thing. Yeah. It's a battle. You fight it, you win it, and you earn that happiness. Yeah. Thank you so much yeah. both for being here. And we really look forward to seeing the segments. We love seeing you. We're families. We're, we're next yes. door to each other. And we're Thank right you. after we're you. Right. We're right. We're right. We're right. And talk about this yes. with you guys. Yes. Yeah. I would, I'm so happy you did this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, Cindy, the Drew Barrymore you, show is coming up at 9.30. No, one minute. We'll be right back. Right, right, right. One minute. <laughs> <laughs>